Welcome to the PICUS Tomograph video tutorial. In this video we are going to show the operation of the PICUS Sonic Tomograph version 3 and explain tips and tricks of the Q74 PC software. In detail we will explain how to set measuring points, how to use the PICUS caliper, how to tap, how to add measuring points after the scan and how to use more measuring points than sensors available. The most important step in preparation of the sonic scan is the visual inspection of the tray. At this moment the tomography level is chosen. In our case we have decided to perform a scan near ground level because the tree showed signs of a root problem. The measuring case contains everything we need. The PICOS tomograph, the PICOS caliper, which is important for recording the geometry, and also the nails, the measuring points. The next step is setting the positions of all measuring points. The correct location of the measuring points is critical to the quality of the tomogram. At each point chosen, a roofing nail is driven through the bark onto the wood. Nails should point to the center of the trunk as good as possible. Because the damage is expected to be located in the center of the trunk, it is most important to measure the remaining wood in the roots most precisely. To do so, each root requires at least three nails, one to the left, one to the right and one on top. If possible, the nails should approximately describe an equal sided triangle. The number of measuring points is dictated by both circumference and outline of the measuring level. Trees with many roots do require more points than trees with round shapes. It is a good working method to stow away all instruments after use into the designated compartment. Taking the circumference of the measuring level is the first step of recording the geometry. The PICOS caliper is integrated into the PICOS measuring case and needs to be assembled prior to the scan. It can be mounted in two different sizes, 1600mm and 2100mm. The extensions of the long version are located underneath the PICOS main unit. Now we need to choose two or three base points and first of all measuring point one. To do so we take the caliper and hold it on the nails in order to see which points can be reached. If the caliper is large enough to cover the half of the tree diameter then we only need two base points forming one baseline. In our case the tree diameter is too large to use one baseline only. The caliper does not reach across. Consequently, we select three base points forming three baselines. Finally, we need to find out which of the points the caliper can reach. Those points become the base points. Once measuring point 1 is identified, the number tags can be installed. The numbers are installed anti-clockwise. Stow the other tags into the case so they can't get lost.
The blue strap is used to hold the Pico's main unit on the trunk. Alternatively, it can be put on the ground if conditions allow to do so. Our tree has 15 measuring points. The Pico's main unit can be mounted just in the middle of them, around nail 7 and 8. Doing so, both sensor cable looms reach nicely around the tree. The left sensor cable loom holding sensors 1 to 6 is connected to the left side of the Pico's main unit. Make sure the red points match before the connector is pushed into the socket. The second sensor cable loom with sensors 7 to 12 is mounted to the connector at the right. Again, make sure the red points are aligned before the connector is pushed in. Set sensors carefully on the nails like shown. The magnets are rather strong. Make sure the sensors do not jump to the nail. Remove any dirt from the magnets before you do so. Now open the Picos program. The new icon opens the wizard, which guides you through the process. Select Sonic Tomogram and click Next. Choose Geometry of ir Irregular Trees in order to use the Picos caliper and press Next. The caliper window opens. First, enter the circumference of the tree. The unit is millimeter. Then, type in the number of measuring points. In our case, it is 15. We are going to use three baselines, and our base points are 1, 5, and 11. The height of the measuring level is approximately 5 cm. Now we can switch on the caliper by holding the left button pressed for a few seconds. Select the Picos mode by pushing the right button. Hold both tips together, like shown on screen, in order to do the zero point calibration. Push the right button when done. When the blue LED is flashing, the caliper is ready for working. In the PC program, now open the COM port by hitting the red button. It should turn green after a few seconds. The connection is established and the first distance to measure is transferred to the caliper. In our case, the first line to measure is from point 0.1 to point 0.5. Put the tips of the caliper arms gently on the nails and push a button. When the button is pushed, the distance in between the tips of the caliper is measured and then sent through the Bluetooth connection to the computer. Continue with the next line when the caliper wants you to do so. A flashing number above the button indicates the standard orientation of the point in relation to its baseline. The operator needs to decide whether the point is located on the left or right side of the baseline. According to this observation, either the right or the left button needs to be pushed. The caliper manual gives additional information. If no number is flashing, you can push either button. When touching the nails with the tips of the caliper, please do not apply a lot of force. The reading gets inaccurate when the caliper arms are bending. When all distances have been measured, please check the outline that was recorded. In our example, the orientation of point 12 is incorrect because the wrong button was hit accidentally. The table shows an exclamation mark to inform the operator that point 12 is not in its standard orientation. To flip the point to the correct side, you can simply left-click the respective cell. The program will then show the correct image. Use the OK button to close the window and then save the file prior to opening the Sonic Scan window.
now we can open the sonic scan window. Since the tree has more measuring points than sensors available in our Pico 3 system, the very first thing to do is telling the program where all these sensors are currently located. These settings are done on the tab named Sensors and Sensor Allocation. Now make sure that the number of sensors is correct. In our case it is 12. Then enter the positions of all sensors step by step. This table needs to be absolutely correct. Any mistake made will corrupt the acoustic data later on. This work is more easy when walking around the tree with a computer in your hands. Measuring points that do not have a sensor do consequently not get a sensor number in the table. Now the actual sonic scan can start. Take the hammer and turn on the PICOS main unit. Select Tomogram PC. Push one of the hammer buttons and keep it pressed for two seconds to turn it on. The display on the PICOS report the radio connection is established. Then open the COM port in the PICOS program. When the button turns green you are ready to tap. Push the buttons on the hammer to set the number of measuring points you want to start tapping. In our case we start with measuring point number 1. Remove the sensor from the nail and set the tapping pin onto the nail. Tap three times or more at each nail. Tap gently. It is not a question of force. When data is collected, put the sensor back on the nail. You can see how the tomogram develops when the tomogram icon is selected in the PC program. Tap on all measuring points. That means Tap also on the nails that do not have a sensor currently, like nails 15 and 14 in our example. The first round of tapping is now complete. The next step is to collect data at the empty nails and therefore we move the sensors to those positions. Of course, we need to adjust the sensor nail allocation table before we can continue tapping. Sensor 6 is now measuring point 7. Sensors 1 and 2 have been moved to nails 14 and 15. The data recorded so far is shown when we switch to the bar graph of the tapping window. It is still incomplete. No data was recorded at points 7, 14 and 15 because in the first round of tapping there were no sensors attached to the nails. Tapping now, having sensors on 7, 14 and 15 completes the set of data at this point. We do now see bars at all measuring points. In order to record the full set of data, we need to tap on all points again. However, in quite a few situations it is okay to skip some of the test points and only tap on relevant nails. When all data has been recorded, we can close the measuring window and calculate the tomogram. Because of the size and position of the defect, the tomogram suffers from a lot of false intersections. The calculation version SOT2 removes all the incorrect intersections and shows the final tomogram. The yellow lines are generated by the PICOS crack detection function. The lines indicate acoustic barriers, which are often small in size but difficult to pass for the waves. Internal cracks and bar conclusions are often the reason for this data. In our first setup, we skipped the route in between measuring point 13 and 14. 
Now we want to show how additional measuring points can be added to improve the accuracy of the scan. Since the root is very wide, we are using two more nails. The new nails become numbers 14 and 15 and the old nails become 16 and 17. We now need to add the new measuring points to the outline of our tree. When doing so, the software automatically assigns the acoustic data of the old points 14 and 15 to the new numbers 16 and 17. The new points are currently located just in between the old points. In order to give them the correct position, we are going to use the caliper again and therefore we open the free shapes with caliper window. In the table, we now need to look for the new points 14 and 15 and then delete their distances by setting them to zero. Turn on the caliper like before and open the COM port. The program will send only the zero distances to the caliper and so the new points are calibrated very quickly. Follow the instructions on the caliper screen like before, step by step. Close the caliper window using the OK button and save the readings. Then the tomogram can be calculated to align the new geometry and acoustic data. We can see that data is missing around the new points. So we go back to the sonic scan window. Of course, we need first to enter the positions of the sensors into the table. Please remember, care must be taken when doing so. Errors will lead to corrupted acoustic data in any case. We can continue to tap when the table is correct and the sensors are located on the corresponding nails. Since most of the data is collected already, it is sufficient to tap around the new points only. Here we see again how the set of bar graphs is completed while tapping. Finally, we can calculate the tomogram. Calculation version SOT2 should be used again. The size of the remaining wood is now completely shown and we get a good impression about the situation inside the tree. The defect has grown since our last scan six years ago and we need to keep monitoring the tree. The test is now complete and we can dismantle the equipment. Turn off the pickers first and disconnect the cable looms afterwards. It is important to pull on the grip, otherwise the connector is still locked. Take off the sensors one by one and coil the cable loom carefully. Stow it in the lid of the measuring case. Disconnect the other cable loom. Remember to pull on the grip, not on the cable. The left sensor cable loom goes to the left pocket. The right sensor cable loom goes to the right pocket.
before we can pull out the nails, we need to take photos of the measuring level all around the tree. The numbers are still on the nails, and if we take 3 to 5 photos, there is a good chance to have at least one good photo of each measuring point. We can also take photos from a higher viewpoint. Those shots can be used in program version Q74 to merge the tomogram into the photo. This works best if the photo shows the measuring level almost in top view. When the photos are taken, we can stow away the number tags and pull out the nails. The Picos tomograph has made the invisible visible. We did find a defect in the tree, but we also did find that the size of the defect is not alarming at this point in time.